everybody. Welcome to After Action Report for stream number one, session one, following session zero. Just really quickly, I'm going to run down the prep activities that we used. Um, and I'm just going to kind of break through. Sorry, break down. I'm a little tired, actually. I'm going to break down all of the elements that I prepared for the adventure. Um, brief comment on how useful it was. And then we're going to talk about the actual playthrough. Um, it was pretty unremarkable. Really solid play from the group. I was really, really proud. Uh, especially when they kicked things off in the beginning. You know, I think Paizo makes such wonderful, just excellent adventures that I had forgotten, honestly. It, it had been a while since I had played one. Um, just the hooks are really strong. The party had all the motivation they needed. Their backstories were, you know, built in. Um, and you can kind of see if you look at the player's guide how that hooks in and what those are. But so solid. And I had forgotten. I'm honestly um, spoiled for it, missing it quite a bit. So um, that was really good. But let's see. So to get ready for the adventure tonight, I looked at Sirenscape. This is the first time I've actually gone into Sirenscape and clicked every single little thing. As it happened, I didn't wind up using as many of them as I had liked. Um, I mentioned during the stream, if you were watching or if you watch it later, but... The module is written so that the party goes to meet the quest giver at sunset. And she's like, oh, you know, we're all enemies of this guy and you need to go and fight the guy. The issue, though, is the, the encounter with the guy is scripted as though it happens during the day. And you have to make modifications on the fly for it to happen at night, um, which is okay. But also in the Sirenscape sound sets, they all assume they happen in the rooms that they're designed to occur in. So I couldn't use most of them simply because the party went at night. And it's, it's a flaw in the writing, in my opinion, just because you give them the quest at night, they're going to be like, oh yeah, let's go now. I um, messaged the thief, um, the rogue, I guess, in this edition, and said, you know, hey, that your thieves guild isn't going to want you going out at night um, just to try and dissuade didn't work. She held back, but she didn't tell the rest of the party that they weren't supposed to do it. Then I had a hell night, approached them on the street, and I'm like, hey, uh, you know, you shouldn't be out at night. And they're like, oh, we're, we're out at night. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, consequences being what they are, the party's going to be in for it when it comes to, um, you know, all of these dead people. and Who might have possibly done it, right? Well, obviously, the party did it, uh, you know, but whatever. We'll, we'll deal with that as we come. Um, so yeah, I went through Sirenscape, super ready to use it, didn't get to use a lot of it, but I did kind of on the fly click in. So they were fighting the, uh, gnome and the giggling orc and both those sounds were playing at once. So the party said a number of times, uh, oh God, that's terrifying or, oh, that's horrible or, or whatever. Right. And so really super, super good there. Um, so we did the Harrow cards for each person. The guide in the book tells you to pick them by their best stat um, and their alignment and sort of aligning that to class. I kind of went that way. I mean, mostly went that way. But um, in general, I, I don't know how much it's going to impact the game. Obviously, it hasn't come up yet. But um, we'll see. We, we did the cards. We passed them all out. Um, made a note of, of whose everybody's card was. Also, in Fantasy Grounds, I had never tried before sharing Images directly to one people. You can do that. You take and, and pick the dragon head and drop it on the person. Um, and it works. They're the only ones who get it shared. And and it, it was neat because, like, everybody knew they got a card. And as players, they're like, oh, I got a card. I got a card. But they were all different. And they didn't know right away what they were. And then um, Brian, Phil's player, immediately set out collecting them. It's like, oh, I need to see them all. I, I, there's not a discernible pattern. Um, but he was looking for one, which was smart. It was good. Um, I used the portals for the map. Didn't come up because they're not that far in the map, but the Fantasy Grounds module that lets you walk into a space and then teleport to another space. Um, Foundry has it as well. I think Foundry's actually does it a little bit better. But um, set that up. That's ready to go. It'll be there for next time. And, you know, it, that's the thing about prep, right? Um, 
whatever I didn't use today, I get to use next time. I will also have to sit down and prep going into next week. Don't get me wrong. I'm way, way, way behind on a 400-page module. <laughs> but, um, you know, portals will be ready. If they're ready to go downstairs, it'll just take them to the next map. Um, I've got the rumors and tarot tables ready. So if I wanted to do another tarot reading, I could roll that out. I didn't want to do it tonight. There was an opportunity to do one, and I declined, and I simply said that they'd already had their hero reading done by getting their cards, and this is kind of true. Um, we could have rolled it out and, and dove in a little deeper, chose not to, just didn't want to derail the flow of things, right? We were moving along, moving well, and it felt a little forced to do another one and sort of grind the whole thing to a halt, especially when I, as the DM, am not completely sure what the impact is supposed to be. So, didn't didn't do it. Had the opportunity, didn't do it. I, I may do it again. Should, will do it again. I'm sure somehow. But it, it came up. I prepped. I didn't use it. Okay, so I played a converted module. Now, for the most part, I had only one problem. Uh, DC for a saving throw did not come over. That wasn't the module's fault. That was the converter's. It was my fault. Um, not bad overall. I mean, I did spend some time. Uh, prepping for this uh, i want to say i put two or three hours total prep in so a lot of that was module work of course a lot of it was just learning how i wanted to do it and how much i was able to bring over from pathfinder and, and how much i need to leave behind for sanity's sake just to be careful i replaced every weapon every spell effect um all of the things that i knew had mechanics attached i replaced all of those like uh, in a person's gear they had you know uh, plus one padded that hasn't been looted yet, but it will next week. Um, I, I swapped that for padded plus one. I just wanted to make absolutely sure that the 5e statistics were followed. They're probably reasonably close, if not identical, but I don't want to take any chances. So I went through all of that and did all of that in the module conversion. For the most part, though, I did swaps and edits. I've got a list down here about who I swapped, and I'll talk a little bit more about each of them now. But uh, for... The uh, orc, the giggling orc that they fought tonight, I just went and grabbed an orc, right? Um, according to his equipment list, he had uh, stuff other than the orc weapons, the great axe and javelin and stuff, so I swapped that around. Not a huge problem to do. Um, took a little time, but I got it right. Um, there's a creature coming up next week uh, called a drain spider. And I'm like, ooh, what is this? You know, again, I have not read that far ahead, and I certainly didn't read about the drain spider. Um, they live in the drain. They they don't drain. I figured, oh, it's going to like suck the strength away. It's like a specter. No, it's not. It, it lives in the storm drain. Um, there's a rooftop version called a shingle spider. <laughs> okay. Um, I used a swarm of spiders for those. <clears throat> I'm talking about that. I don't get too far ahead of myself. Now, the other thing that's very different from 5th edition, at least the way we've been playing it, um, and, and it's different in the way the Fantasy Grounds modules are built as well, is the gear. Everybody, you know, it's always this deal, like, oh, I loot the body, I loot the body, I loot the body. Like, that is an ordeal in 5th edition. Um, you just say, oh, they don't have anything, or, oh, yeah, he's got a short sword and some other armor. If you want it, you can have it. You know, it's not a big deal. In the Pathfinder module, at least the way these were built at the time, every NPC has a loot bag, a gear entry, a parcel is what they call it. And I can drag and drop that into the party chat, or the party chat, the party inventory, and they sit there and carve it out. It's much more D&D, &D, old school, um, right? You lived for that. We're going to dig in, we're going to get stuff. So I had to redo all of those gear parcels, but it was it was nice. The flip side of this is they're, they're going to get a lot more uh, items, especially magic items, if I go buy the book, and I will until I decide not to, at least. Um, a lot more than I normally hand out in a 5e campaign like you might go four or five levels before you find a magic item in 5e in this this is 3e right converted so they're gonna get a lot more magic and i may have to tweak the difficulty we'll see um i almost killed at least one of them tonight i mean the first level is not not hard to do but i think it's okay but it's good it's gonna be a different monty hall compared to the way it was previously and i think it'll be welcome um, I had to do Thunderstone, just completely new. Um, it's not done yet, and I'll probably just play it by ear. I mean, it deafens everybody in a radius, right? So uh, I, I 
thought about building a spell effect that did that. I thought about pulling Deafened into the card and stuff. I'm, I'm not going to. Um, we'll see how many Thunderstones actually come up, right? But um, for the most part, that was the only completely new thing that I had. No, well, that and the wand. Um, and, you know, once again, I'm getting ahead of myself. But Wand of Acid Splash, not a thing in 5e. It's a cantrip, right? Cantrippy ones, too. Um, I had to make a decision on the fly. Like, you can upcast ones spend more charges, right, to upcast. And I'm like, well, how the hell am I going to do that? I figured we'll, we'll, we'll still do it. You can do the fifth level um, and spend five charges to throw the fifth level damage. It only has a maximum of seven charges, so we don't have to go all the way up the stack. Um, but I figured, you know, we'll do that. And so I, I built that into the one. I actually gave it the two damage rolls for the guy. I didn't wind up using the fifth level one because, I mean, that would nuke them at this point, and we're not into that right now. Um, okay, so just really quick, the stuff that I did prepare, I have this pin cushion in Fantasy Grounds, um, and you can just sort of drag and drop the little dragon heads, and I used that um, pretty extensively to prepare for this. So I've got the links to the actual Fantasy Grounds pages, so I don't have to find them, I can just go straight to them. Haunted Fortunes, the image for Z Zarella, uh, no, not even going to try, for the fortune teller. Her handout, the home, the old fishery. Um, that's the area, right? And then here are the, all of the NPCs and what I had to do. So lambs, lambs are little uh, children with daggers. I used a commoner, tweaked it ever so slightly. Um, Hookshank's Grueler, I started with a thug. Tweaked that one pretty extensively. Uh, blue, I used the wolf stat block, straight up. Didn't tweak it at all. For Yargan Balco... Um, I started with the Apprentice Wizard, and I switched in all the acid stuff, and I took the spells back out. Uh, Giggles is the orc. Again, I mentioned that earlier. I just used the orc stats, and then I swapped up the, the gear, um, left the rest of it alone. Drained Spider. I took a Swarm of Spiders and then modified it. So a Swarm of Spiders has damage reduction uh, to most damage types, and they do less damage when they've taken half. I removed both of those features from this creature. It has way more hit points than I think it probably should. We'll see. It should be interesting. Now, there's there's room coming up with four of them in it, and I'm a little worried about that next week, but we'll see. Um, I don't know. It's first level party. Anything can kill them. We mentioned that already, so <laughs> we'll, we will see. They've gonna, they're going to have some items, some magic. Um, I don't know. They're not going to have time to rest, so it'll be somewhat depleted. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be an interesting game next week. I could change it. They haven't seen them yet, so I could change it. Well, I'll think about it. I've got a week to think about it, too. Uh, i got two of the games to run, but, you know, those don't near, need nearly so much prep. Uh, Gadrin, I used a spy, modified him pretty significantly, cut his speed in half to match the speed in the module, applied the armor, applied the weapon, that kind of stuff. Uh, the crocodile, I kept straight up. I swapped a jigsaw shark for a reef shark. Not a big deal there. Um, I got the maps ready. I turned the lighting off for tonight. Um, Fantasy Grounds has lighting support. I just don't like it, and I don't want to be distracted by struggling with it. It, it could be made to work by somebody smarter than me. But um, I, I changed a dart into a shuriken. Like I said, the Thunderstone was new. Uh, I started with a Wand of Magic Missile and swapped it out so that it casts Acid Splash instead of Magic Missile. Um, so going to get into this, what I plan to do. I needed some maps, right? In the first part of the stream, you see I'm throwing them on the screen. Information overload. Boom, boom, boom. I'm trying to give the party the impression that this is a deep, a rich tapestry, if you will. This is a deep setting. There's a lot of detail. Um, and they're not going to see it all. But I wanted to make them feel grounded and rather than, oh, this is a city and some fantasy place, generic, generic, right? It's not that. And Pathfinder has never been that. So I wanted to make absolutely sure to sort of set the tone right up front um so a bunch of maps i needed uh then these are the cards uh the rogue got the juggler the um ranger got the peacock paladin got the paladin that was funny he actually played that well uh phil the bard got the unicorn the sorcerer got the theater the uh, barbarian got the mountain man and the warlock got the courtesan 
so like I said, I got these tables ready in case I needed them. Didn't need them yet, but we'll use them soon. I definitely want to get those rumors in there. Rumor tables are so great. I mean, it's also an old school mechanism, but so good to, to give both true and false information to the party and kind of make them feel like they actually are in a place where something's going on. So those are ready, but I haven't used them yet. So this is what I planned. Uh, I was going to do the world introduction, talk about the theme-based setting, introduction to Corvosa, um, offer everybody the opportunity to swap their languages around, then pull them for their history and connections to the place, prompt for connections to the first villain, and then kick off chapter one, part one. Um, the only thing of this I did not do was pull the history of the place. I, I overlooked it during play and it didn't I did, didn't come up again. It wasn't like a natural place, I guess, to squeeze that in. But I do wanted to, I did want to ask, and I'll, I'll make a note to ask next time, um, you know, do they have a history here? Did they just roll into town? Have they lived here for a while, et cetera? I, I answered some questions that way tonight. I said, well, if you've lived here for a while, then you're going to know, right? And then I just kind of left it open um, soft, right? So they can sort of determine. I think pretty much everybody is from here, but we'll definitely need to ask that question and pin that down just for conceptual play. Um, I guessed we would get about half the way through it. That's about right. Uh, so a little closer to 60, maybe 70%, because they've got three of the four major fights done. I mean, you know, the the kids, I didn't really want them to fight the kids anyway, and there's some stuff in there about not fighting the kids. So they're going to find a room full of kids next week um and they're you know hiding sleeping uh, trying to stay out of the fight so i i don't consider that a combat encounter hopefully that won't be a combat encounter we'll see um so what actually happened when we played we started late we had a player that was late and um, we were ready to kick off at the 15 minute mark like we agreed during session zero but they showed up 13 minutes after so fine you know we played um is what it is. Um, the description I gave was long-winded. If you listen to it, I stumbled a lot more than I normally do or would have liked to. Um, wasn't quite sure. I wasn't as confident as I should have been. I should have written it down. Um, even if I didn't use the material that I wrote, I should have written it down. I did this for Thay in the uh, Rise of Tiamat campaign. That they just did did a bunch of research, took a page and a half of notes. I was ready. I used some of it. I'm going to say I used 40% of it. But the exercise of writing it down put it more firmly in my mind, short-term memory kind of thing. And so it was ready to roll. Um, in this specific case, I just, I just skipped that and I regret it. So tip for next time. Um, the players picked up and started playing right away. Again, um, it's good players. It's a good group of players. Only one of them is brand new, and several of them have played together before. Um, but I'm, I'm giving credit to the people that wrote the module, just the way it starts. It's, it's super, super good. You know, we didn't start in a tavern, for example. We could have, but we didn't. Um, everybody had a reason to come together, and they also distrusted one another just a little bit. It was some good role play. I was handing out inspiration left and right. Um Really, really good stuff. Uh, it's a great group. It's going to make for a good series of games. Um, but they, they dove right in. Uh, so we did get the cards handed out. And talked about that already. And we just got rolling. And they were like, okay, let's get to this. Let's do the thing. I was a little worried we were going to run short. That I was going to be like at 8.30 going, okay, guys, that's all I prepared. But no, I mean, didn't happen. Um, combat slows things down, even with Fantasy Grounds. Especially when we got players that... Uh, are new to the system and they don't quite know how it works and i got to remind people to pass their turns and those kinds of things. Um, in general, it, it happened almost exactly how I anticipated. So good on me for, for guessing that correctly. But I was worried there for a minute and they, they didn't spend any time in town. They didn't spend any time dinking around. They were like, oh, we got these cards. This is important. This is the guy. I hate this guy. We're going for it. So that was great. Um, uh, I need to do something about these chairs. I... <sighs> It's not a massive amount of damage, but he's doing like a mall. Um, it's probably okay, but I do need to look at it because we just I just kind of said, okay, I'll allow it, okay, I'll allow it. But in general, it, it could be abused. Um, 
It just depends. But he's throwing extra dice of damage, and on a crit, that's going to compound. So I need to look at it closely and make sure that it wasn't too many dice. If it was just the same damage as a maul, and he's doing it two-handed, not using a shield, it's probably okay. But I definitely would need to look at that and give that some thought before he gets into combat again, because he's just going to keep doing that. And they're putting chairs in the bag of holding so they can keep doing that. Excuse me. <sighs> so, yeah. Um, that's my list. That's the, the after action for session one. So, really good role play. Uh, really engaged group. It looks to be a good module. They, they're, they're hooked. They're into the story. The bridge between part one and part two of chapter one here is going to be really important, but I'm very, very confident I can swing that. And um, yeah, um, I think that's all I've got. No questions so far tonight. That's fine. Uh, feel free to leave them afterwards. I'll respond um, after, or you can join the Discord. There's a link right now on this screen. There's a link in every stream. So feel free to hop on. Uh, you can ask me questions directly. We can talk. If you ever want to run this yourself and you own it, um, I'm happy to share with you my campaign at some point, especially when I'm done. It's it's hard to do, to keep it in sync mid, mid throw. But uh, for all the NPCs that I made and so forth, if, if this is something that, that you have and can save time by using my work instead of your own, fine. I'm, I'm down for that. Reach out, hit me up. Um, but yeah, I think we'll wrap here for tonight. Thank you everybody for session one after action, Curse of the Crimson Throne. We will see you next week.